Today we're inside a 2016 Honda Pilot taking a look at Honda's latest infotainment and navigation system. Although this looks very similar to what we see in the current generation Honda Civic, there are some important differences. First off, of course, we get a larger screen. So this is now an 8-inch color touchscreen. We also have navigation provided by Garmin in this system. On the left side of the screen, we have a power button, home button, volume up and down. This does scroll, as you can see right there, or you can actually scroll on the screen as well. Menu button, back button, and then a control for our day-night brightness. This latest Honda system is based on the Android operating system that you see on smartphones as well as tablets. It's very, very snappy, and it has some decent improvements for 2016. The first off is we have three USB ports, so I was able to charge iPads with the two USB ports, one in the center console and one in the dashboard, and then the other one can charge cell phones or smartphones, that sort of thing. All three USB ports are accessible in this system. Now the two USB ports in the back of the Pilot are not immediately accessible as audio devices, but they do charge. Now this system goes on a first come first serve priority list for that iPod or USB device. As you can see, I have USB and iPod right there. If I were to plug two iPods in the system, whichever one was plugged in first would be the one the system recognized. Let's start off by taking a look at the audio inputs. You can see that we do have AM, FM, Sirius, XM. We also have an optical disc player. It's a Blu-ray player in ours because we do have the rear seat entertainment system. Again, those USB ports, auxiliary input, the rear video ports because again, we have that rear seat entertainment system. And of course we have audio apps and Bluetooth as well as a built-in Pandora icon right there. If we click over on the audio apps screen, this is where you'll be connected to the AHA server right there in the system. You do need to have the appropriate app loaded on your phone. The audio interface is fairly self-explanatory. We're gonna go ahead and choose the iPod here so you can see what that looks like. We do have complete access to our iPod, albums, genres, etc. We do have scroll gestures in this system as well. This little arrow right there allows you to minimize the screen so that way you can see your album art, what's playing right now, and you have access to the track forward, backward, play, pause, and then controls for shuffle, etc. If you want to access your device, you simply click up there, and you can choose how you want to access your device. You can choose playlists, albums, etc. We can go right there, and again, we have the ability to scroll through our iPod or iDevice. This works essentially the same whether you're using an iDevice or a USB stick. The volume is a slider. We can touch there, and again, touch right over here or touch right there on the face of the radio as well. The back button works in basically all the screens in the system. We have simple access to change our source right there. We can click source and it'll pop up that source list. We also have easy access to our navigation map. Now one big change in this generation of the software is that navigation is now provided by Garmin. So this should look very familiar to you if you've used any aftermarket navigation products. We do have pinch to zoom in this particular system and we do have topographical information and traffic information provided right here on the screen. You can see right here we have some traffic going on right there. Navigating in the system is fairly snappy. It's actually snappier than most aftermarket nav systems, likely because this is running on Android and it has a relatively fast processor in it, rather than being one of those less expensive discrete aftermarket products. Now the built-in menu is essentially the same as we see in every Garmin product out there. So we click on where to and you choose home, Honda places, you can look up addresses, restaurants, etc. This is not quite as fully featured as some of the online connected systems like we find in Chrysler products, but it is very, very easy to use. Again, the back button does work in all of these menus, and you can get traffic conditions or a traffic legend right here on the screen. Now, the traffic information on this display is not provided by Sirius XM, but rather by HD radio service. You'll notice that when we're on the rest of the screens, like info or phone, we do have those direct access buttons to the map or the audio system right up top. On the info menu, you'll find your trip computer. This has fuel economy for your current trip, previous drives, etc. History of trip A. This is very typical for Honda. Some additional information here, voice info, so you can tell how you operate the system using voice commands. We do have a full voice command system. We have a clock, wallpaper right here as well. The Honda Link app provides smartphone and internet connected features. So I do have the smartphone app loaded right here on my iPhone. There is also an Android app available as well. We can click on places and then we can look up things like keywords, cafes, etc. in an online manner. This augments the built-in navigation system so you can more easily find places near you. And this does, of course, use the data plan on your smart device. We can also see vehicle messages. This would be maintenance, recalls, campaigns, etc. related to this particular vehicle, messages from Honda. And we also have a weather app right here, which gives us the current weather and the five-day 
weather forecast right there on the screen. We also have online help and support. This is the latest feature guide, quick tips, connection guide, etc. delivered again right there through the data service on your smartphone. The rear audio screen is self-explanatory. This is how you control that rear seat entertainment system that's located right up there in the screen. The power is off and you can turn it on, change its source right here in the system. We have a dedicated AHA app on the home screen. That's how you would connect to that streaming service. And the dots on the bottom indicate that we can scroll the screen side to side. Now these extra screens are designed for future apps that may be added to Honda Link in the future. We also have settings over here. This is where you would adjust a wide variety of vehicle settings as well as system settings. So we can change things in the system settings right here, like the display, color, background, guidance, volume, etc., the beeps, and all that sort of thing going on in that. Lastly, let's take a look at voice commands because the voice commands are very fully featured in this system. If I click the voice command button on the steering wheel, you'll get a quick prompt and a guide right here to tell you what you can talk about. So we do have access to climate control audio. We can search music in USB devices or iOS devices. We also have access to navigation destinations, voice settings, and voice help right in the system. We can do things like climate control, After the beep, say... Temperature, 70 degrees. Temperature, 70 degrees. And the system has now set the temperature to 70 degrees on the climate control system. Now, like some of the other systems out there, we don't have any climate control information on this particular screen, but it does control that climate control system. This is a little bit different than my Ford Touch, which integrates the climate controls into the system and provides those voice commands for that. In fact, the voice commands in this system really do rival my Ford Touch in terms of completeness. There are very few systems out there that allow you this kind of voice command uh, control over all the features in the system. Now, I do find the voice commands to be a little little bit clunky perhaps. Uh, they're not quite formatted the way that I would prefer them, but they are very complete and once you learn the system it will become second nature. Overall this system is definitely one of the best in this segment. I think Chrysler's Uconnect is a notch above this in terms of functionality and features. It does have a built-in cell modem which does provide some of those online features and functions without a connected smartphone as long as you pay for the extra data plan. I do rank this slightly above the current generation My Ford Touch system. We don't know what Sync 3 will hold for us, and I definitely rank this above the systems available in the Toyota Highlander. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the Honda Link system in the 2016 Honda Pilot. Go ahead and check out the complete review on the Pilot on my channel as well, and I'll see you next week.